name is Dave Crane. For many years, the biggest fear of most people was to stand up in front of a live audience, speak, communicate, and motivate, and get people to like your brand, your services, and your products. Most people got it wrong, but those who did get it right were seen as leaders. And then the lockdown happened, and now everyone's communicating through different platforms and webinars. And the problem is, if they didn't learn to communicate effectively before, they're even worse now. And they lose audiences who just switch off. And then we went digital, and the possibilities are endless. As a speaker, you can reach any amount of thousands of people, and you can share your message, you can motivate them, and you can change lives. As an event organizer, the possibilities are endless as to how big you can make an event. You don't have to worry about logistics. You don't have to worry about language. You can create something that people can watch in their own time and attend in real time at the same time. As a corporate decision maker and as the owner of a business, you can create your message. You can create a niche. You can get the people from your industry to work with you and make your tribe defined very simply just by putting it online. And what kind of events can you create? You can have a web TV show that dominates your industry and sends your message and your brand across the globe. You can invite in the very best of the industry as your special guests every single day. You can sell through Zoom calls and look after your team the same way. You can also have webinars that unite everybody and tell them about your latest product launches. You can also step into a digital world. Imagine that you could be a digital version of yourself, speaking at a virtual conference. Virtual conferences will change the game. Not only can you speak in a big auditorium where people from their laptops are all present in front of you, but you can also have spin-off rooms, meeting rooms, you can display the latest products. I can also have boardroom meetings at the same event. You could do them in real time, but also leave all the content available for people to comment on or review at a later date. And the cost is a fraction. You can go global from your laptop. These are the possibilities that are for you, whether you're a speaker, an event organizer, a small business, or a big decision maker. You need to think about the new version of you and how that will impact your brand and take your opportunities to a brand new level. The possibilities are endless now that we're completely digital. You can be online and offline, on stage and off stage, and your speaking ability will drive your message, drive your brand and change the world. It's time for you to now learn to speak on stage. Hi, it's me, Dave Crane. How are you? I've still got my dodgy chair from yesterday. I'm waiting to get my new one. I'm going to get one of these chairs that you can sit in, you can relax, and there's a head thing, so you can get your head, and your feet can go up like that and not have to hold them in the air like you're doing some kind of, like, planking. But that's actually got a thing under your feet. And I'm only doing it because of the fact I didn't expect to spend so much time in this room uh, at home, basically, doing stuff, because normally you go out and do lots of things, but of course... You don't do that now, but I travel around the world through Zoom and through the technology of the internet, which is kind of exciting. Hi, I'm Dave Crane. Nice to see you. Uh, if you just arrived, then welcome to Speak on Stage. My job is to train people to speak all around the world to grow their branding, their marketing, position them as an industry expert. And I do it through this show, which is Speak on Stage. I share lots of different ideas with you all the time, teach you how to do keynotes, but also take you in a direction where if you're looking to communicate with people and be very effective and grow your brand and your, rela your relationship 
with your industry, then this is full of pointers to help you get there. Today's show is very specific as well. Today shows how to survive the second pandemic. I know you're looking at that going, what, the second pandemic of somebody stealing your inflatable ring so you can't get in a swimming pool? No, 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 no. There's a reason why I've got that picture. Um, in fact, you should have a cup of tea. Cheers, by the way. See my, my, my mug um, here? With Santa Claus on the front. I've been using this mug now for the last, what, since we went into lockdown, about seven, eight, maybe nine months. And when I first started using it, people were going, oh, stupid mug. Hopefully they won't call me that. I hope they're saying that about the cup. But the thing is, uh, with the mug, the exciting thing about it is really that it's closer to Christmas than you think. There's only a couple of months. So, in fact, if anything, I'm well ahead of the time. This is what everyone should have in lockdown. And you should wear one, uh, wear one on your head. You should have one for the show in the future. Get one ordered as we speak. So today, as I mentioned, this is what it's all about. It's all about how to survive a second pandemic. And you're saying to me, Dave, what do you mean the second pandemic? You mean the second wave? Well, we've been in lockdown, we got out again, so I think it's completely wrong. No, this is a completely different pandemic. This pandemic we're talking about is a knock-on effect of what's been around for a long, long time, but been ignored by everybody, but has been exasperated by being in lockdown. Let me explain. So for most people, going to lockdown is hard enough. It's so essentially more difficult if you're on your own or you're with somebody who you hate. Many people got married and divorced as a direct result of being stuck in lockdown. If you have lots of challenges that are financial, physical, uh, emotional, if you've got issues uh, that have been biting you since childhood, these are things that turn into a second pandemic of mental health. And this is not to be sniffed at. You see, what used to happen in the old days, in the corporate world as much as everywhere else, is people would say, oh, there's something wrong with him. Yeah, he's in a bad mood, or he's grumpy, or he's depressed. Just leave him, he'll be all right, he'll come back again. Or let's go out for a pint, let's go out together, have a beer, you'll be okay, mate. Don't worry, we're okay. Meanwhile, you'd be really stressed and angry. Um, and it needed people like, I mean, I'm a, I've am been a hypnotherapist, a practicing hypnotherapist for about 20 years, 20 plus years. So I pretty much know about working on this subject. I've been working with people to stop them smoking, lose weight, deal with stress, childhood issues, fears, phobias, a ton of different things, weight loss, all this kind of stuff. So I've been involved in this and I do it in a corporate environment as well. So I go out to a room full of anything but 100 to maximum I've had 4,000 people that put me into a hypnotic trance and got them to feel differently about themselves and visualize themselves differently and change, <coughs> excuse me, oh dear change their emotional relationship with things that have happened in the past. I'm also a stage hypnotist. So as a stage hypnotist, you can turn around and say, yeah, Dave, that's ridiculous. It's all fake. It's all made up. It's not. I promise you, I should show you a clip at some point and prove to you exactly how effective it is. Um, but I don't want to get, this is not about the comedy stage hypnosis. This is very much about the fact that this is a real serious pandemic that's affecting a lot of people. And this is just the beginning, to be honest with you, of where this is going to go. Many people are feeling the pinch now because we all expected this to be over in like, what, two, three weeks, maybe? A month maximum, you stay indoors and then it all gets cleared out and the those who had to be isolated were isolated. They're given a clean bill of health or whatever it would be. Nobody thought we were talking about maybe, what, two, three years of this kind of experience. It's going to get better, of course it's going to get better, but for many people it's going to get worse. And that's why I wanted to do today's show to explain about the big challenges and to, to really bring it home. The fact that there is going to be a second pandemic and what the, the point is, is by sharing it with you, then not only are you able to deal with it, but you're also able to talk to other people who are finding it more difficult to deal with and hopefully be able to counsel them and be able to get them to have some challenges a lot less than they would do normally. This show goes out live, by the way, to uh, LinkedIn. It goes out to Facebook, to Twitter via Periscope, and also to YouTube. Um, please feel free to share it. Now, it's a strange thing to say, uh, have a watch party on Facebook, because it's not something you want to celebrate as a party. <clears throat> but it's called a watch party on Facebook, where you can just start one going, and all your friends get to see that we're broadcasting, and they're wondering what you're watching, and they come in and watch it as well. This is essential, by the way. Today's show is going to be very, very powerful, and it's really necessary for those who have a real challenge to deal with everything. Uh, and I want to be—I want to make sure that we reach the maximum amount of people. 
And the problem with, with emotional challenges and emotional uh, stress is it's invisible in most cases. Somebody looks a bit grumpy, somebody looks a bit challenged, somebody doesn't say anything for a while, goes quiet. Now, normally at work, you can check on them. You can get to the water cooler and say, oh, you know, they've not said anything for a while. I hope they're okay. You can take them to one side and just say, oh, can I have a bit of chat? You're all right. How are you feeling? But when people are isolated and they're at home, um, then not only is it impossible to be able to diagnose, because if you, if you diag diagnose, diagnose, you can't diagnose because there's no such thing. Diagnose, because when you've got a Zoom call and you've got like, say, 10 people on it, if you've only got 10 people in your organization, some people are naturally quiet. So are they being naturally quiet because they're relaxed, naturally quiet because they're upset, naturally quiet because they're depressed, or naturally quiet because they've just muted themselves on their, um, on their webcam? That's the challenge that you basically are going to have to find out if you are a leader of people um, and they're your people, but even so as a colleague, it's something you should really address and look at to help people to get them through it as well. It's a really difficult time to be had by all. So I really want to be able to stress that this session is about opening your eyes to it and hopefully um, forewarned is, is, is forefixed, uh, as they don't say, but I just kind of said there. So we've got a couple of videos to share with you. The first one I'm going to share with you is one that I put together a couple of months ago just to illustrate the challenges that I believe that people are going through. Uh, and then we'll look at the real mental health impact and uh, ways that the experts are saying that you should be able to deal with it. So uh, today's show is a bit more serious than the average show, but I think that uh, ultimately this is going to cost a lot of money to everybody if they don't get to the heart of it. And the mental health situation is something that is not looked after by insurance generally, and it hasn't been before. If you needed mental health um, assistance, then what would happen is you'd have to pay for it out of your own pocket because it wasn't on the list of things that your average ho uh, hotel, uh, hospital or insurance company would deal with. And... It's going to have to be addressed because it can't be ignored because literally it's going to be a pandemic and a lot of people are suffering from it even as we speak. So I want to share, first of all, a video that I put together all about the effects of mental and emotional health. Nobody said it would be easy being in lockdown for so long, watching the news, watching your business evaporate and people die. It's the most challenging of all. Why me? Why now? Where do we go from here? But the world has changed. The opportunities are bigger. The digital world is now open. You can find a new way of doing things. All you have to do is dig deeper than you've ever done before. And connect with those who are watching you. And say, what can we do? The world doesn't end. It just changes. And these challenges are also incredible opportunities. You need to find your voice, you need to find your direction, you need to find your motivation. You need to help others who might have lost their way, help them find themselves. My name is Dave Crane. I help people to get on stage. I'll never stop fighting to help you to get on yours. That's a video I shared a while ago on, uh, on social media. My own thoughts about speaking are essential for this, in my opinion, because literally when you start working out what it is that stops you speaking and you're able to form your thoughts and your mindset around how you communicate with people, a lot of that same mindset of going on stage and dealing with your fears and phobias is along the same kind of lines of the things that you need to be able to address to be effective when it comes to mental health. Uh, not least being busy, not least thinking about where you're going with this, not least being able to take, uh, um, understand your own feelings and the surroundings and what you need to do to step up to make things better. These are all natural if you're a speaker. And so in many ways, they do overlap with what you need to understand for mental health. So I'm going to show you now a video, which I hope really helps to helps to let you understand the many issues that people will be experiencing. You probably have already felt it. I have. I get certain days when I get really feeling down and I just don't play. All I do is just say, right, it's a TV day. 
I just let myself just chill out, relax, watch some TV because I want to be able to recharge my batteries without any stress. And uh, it really helps. And there is no lack of, there's no set time on how long you need to do this or how often you need to do it. You need to do it as long as you need to do it. So we'll be addressing that and other things in the next video. I love your thoughts, your comments. As always, let me know where you are. Let me know if you are suffering from it because, as always, we'll, we're here for you. Um, like a big Speak On Stage family. So let's take a look at that next and Speak On Stage. While countries around the world continue to mobilize to contain the spread of COVID-19, mental health experts say we can't lose sight of an equally alarming issue, the long-term mental health impact the pandemic is going to leave on society. What I think we're facing here is a very traumatic event for a lot of people. It's a, it's a traumatic societal uh, event for people. And one thing that we know about trauma is that while it's happening, you do whatever you can do to survive. You uh, bear down and you just get through it, which is what we're all trying to do right now. I think that we're still very much in the trauma phase, the active trauma phase uh, of this pandemic. But what happens after physical distancing measures are lifted? What comes after the pandemic is over and people are able to get back to whatever their normal may be? There's going to be residual stress, depression, uh, certainly financial pressures, learning how to re-engage with the world in this new way. That's going to be difficult for a lot of people. Uh, and those are exactly the kinds of risk factors that lead to increasing rates of depression, anxiety, and even suicide. The rapid spread of the pandemic gave little chance to prepare for, or even process, all that has happened in terms of job losses and the complete uprooting of everyday life and relationships. Maggie Hu is a student at McMaster University who suffers from a generalized anxiety disorder. I shut down because of, I don't know what to do. I'm not prepared for this. I was, I did not run, run a rehearsal of the situation in my head. It's exhausting to go, not worry because it is practically impossible for me to not worry. Hennick says for those already suffering from anxiety and depression, the pandemic could be exasperating their symptoms. He is also concerned for those who have never suffered from any mental health issues in the past and are now facing a life disruption without fully digesting the long-term impact this may have on them. A large body of scientific studies show that there is a close relationship between indicators such as unemployment, mental health, and suicide. Research out of the Great Recession of 2008 reveals that a 1% increase in unemployment was accompanied by a 1% increase in the rates of suicides in the U.S. Hennick explains there is a peak and a valley response in our nervous system when faced with trauma. Right now, we are at a peak in which we are engaging with the immediate threat of the pandemic. You go into survival mode, which can be very taxing on a person's mental health. Uh, and in fact, it doesn't actually let you think through or process what's happening to you. Its only interest is in getting, in keeping you alive and keeping you safe. Once the pandemic is over, there will be a valley in which we recover from that threat. But the problem is, going back to baseline without support can take a lot longer than we may think. After the threat passes, Hennick says people can start to retreat or fall into depression or find many other ways of dissociating themselves with the trauma they experienced. It can really become uh, almost an infection on its own. Some people stay stuck either way at the top of that peak or they stay stuck down at the bottom or anywhere in between. Not everybody returns to baseline uh, and that's where we become concerned about mental illness. In Canada, we currently have universal medical care, but things like psychotherapy, which Hennig says has proven to be an effective treatment for mental health problems, generally isn't funded publicly. Hennig says the federal and provincial governments need to step up to make sure proper treatments and programs are funded, so as many people as possible have access when in need, adding that everyone, including employers, will have to play a role. I think it's important for employers in particular to realize when we start to loosen uh, some of the restrictions that we're currently facing, that this needs to happen slowly, that we can't go back to uh, the way the world was overnight. As for Maggie, she says she already knows she won't be able to go from zero to 100 right away. I hope that with the virus slowly dying down, 
my social supports like psychiatrist, counselor, therapist, will I'll get those supports back slowly and help me with my current fears and uncertainties. Thanks for watching. To stay up to date on the latest breaking national and international news, be sure to subscribe to our channel, where we also dig into big issues around the world in our weekly series, Global News Explains. So welcome back to Speak on Stage. Uh, I'm Dave Crane and we're sharing here the thoughts about the second pandemic um, of mental health and mental illness. And also the stigma related to it. It's one of those things that we turn around and say, you know what, I'm very depressed or I feel anxious or I feel lonely or I've got challenges that really hurt. Uh, many people don't know how to deal with it because they've never dealt with it properly themselves. So they either just run away from you or they blame you or they do lots of things like saying, come on, you'll be okay. Like that's going to help. Big problem for men, especially because at least with women, we're used to talking and sharing each other's emotional concerns about life and, and fears and, and shopping, whatever. It's a ability that lights up different parts of the brain when they're chatting. For guys, it's a stiff upper lip. It really is a case that, you know, don't be a, a wuss. Don't be a whatever. Um, you've got to keep it in if you're a real man. Don't, don't go on about stuff like that. Come on, snap out of it. And that's what leads to all sorts of challenges. And that's something that we're gonna look at now because I wanna share with you a diagram that I use for hypnosis and hypnotherapy so you can see exactly how the mind works. So if I stretch this out a little bit, uh, you can see here that this iceberg shape is like your mind, okay? So we've got the surface where you've got the wavy line, that is the water. That's literally the bit that you would see in an iceberg. Above it is the conscious mind, which has willpower, short-term memory, critical abilities and your logical decision making in it. So willpower is your ability to say, I will fix this, I'm gonna be okay. Short term memory is the thinking about what you're doing right now, but then you don't need to think about this when you're doing something else. And critical ability is your ability to turn around and say, right, I like this and I don't like that or something. Uh, logical decision making, again, that makes perfect sense because logical, logical decision making is saying, well, if that happens, then this happens, then that happens. And it's also part of your emotional intelligence, which is a, a large part of what we're talking about here. So then let's extend it a little bit more to see what's below the surface. So that's above the surface, that's your conscious mind. That's a bit, the only bit that you can actually control. Then below the surface, We've got your habits, your beliefs, your long-term memory, your values, your emotions, your senses, your imagination, and your protective factor. Let me explain a little bit more about what they mean. So first of all, let's start with your habits, things that you do on a regular basis. You don't think about them. The subconscious below your service. Don't bite your nails. I didn't bite my nails. Oh yeah, gosh, I've been biting my nails. See, you didn't think about it. It's below the surface as an action. Your belief system, the belief that things are going to work out terribly and it's going to be all terrible, or the belief that things will work out well in the end. You don't think about them. They're just there they're from childhood and from experience and culture, or maybe from your religious or political background. They drive the way that you think about it. And then you've got your long-term memory. Everything you've ever done in your life is stored away uh, in that long-term memory. Let's have a little bit of a look at the diagram so I can show you a little bit more. Your values is the things that you believe. If you find a, a wallet, your values might say hand it into the police because that's the right thing to do. Your values might say, no, finders, keepers, losers, weepers. I'll pick it up, I'll keep it because my value says if it's in front of me, it's somebody up there decided it's time for me to get some extra money to spend on making myself happy. That's values. Let's look again at the emotions. Everything that happens below the surface is your emotions. You can't normally control them. Other people control them for you unless you know how to do that and choose the ones that you want. Then you've got your imagination, the ability to think things and the ability to, to, to project where you truly want to be. Your senses are there as well. Everything you've ever done and ever experiences experience, even if you don't sense it at the time, your senses are still recording smell, touch, taste, feelings. In fact, to be honest with you about senses, there's about 25 different senses, not the five that we get told we're going to have, including your temperature, you know, sensing when you're hot, or love, or sensing when you, you fear. That's a, that's a sense, but it's not amongst the normal five senses they tell you. So there's about 20, 25 or, uh, that we know about. And a protective factor, this bit here, uh, which is all about your ability to then look after yourself and make decisions that keep you safe. 
Now, the problem is with the protective factor, it was created to keep you safe when you're a child, and the same things might keep you safe now, but they don't really help you because you're older and wiser, and they prevent you from being able to do things. I won't spend too long on this, but I'll give you an example. So, for instance, if you're a smoker, your protective factor has taught you from a very early stage to get on with people, to stay safer by being in a group of people and doing what they do. So, for instance, if you started smoking because your friends were smoking, it's really hard to shake that cigarette without then changing your relationship with, I should do what other people do. Does that make sense? So as a hypnotherapist, I go back to the initial sensitizing event. The first time you had that feeling, which is normally at school, first day of school, sitting down, and everyone's doing the same thing because the teachers told them to do it. Um, and that relates to your cigarettes later on and other things that you did that might not be good for you now, but you did them as part of your survival technique. Does that make sense? It might not. Don't worry about it. I'm just trying to explain it. You can always watch this video again as we go further. Then if that's all part of your subconscious mind, then you'll notice the green bit here, beauty sleep, unconscious mind. That's to do with your ability to just basically recharge when you're sleeping. The amount you blink, the amount your skin temperature is and your skin sheds. And your, your bones grow back and all that stuff. That's not driven by you. You don't think about it. It's your unconscious mind that's constantly working with this. Now, many people have a different business model to this when they're doing hypnotherapy or NLP, neuro linguistic programming, or many other things. Sometimes they link together the unconscious mind and subconscious as the same thing. For me, I separate them. That's just the way I was taught. And the last part is this, the blue bit, the superconscious mind, which is your link to all things. That is apparently what happens with quantum physics and when you pray and you relate to lots of different things. I'm not going to spend too long with this because I think it's important to illustrate what it is that we're talking about, but not to dwell on it in today's session, just to give you a highlight of what it's all about. With that, I want to share with you then the success business model, because I think it makes a big difference when you look at this. Again, an iceberg. Again, what people see. What what people don't see is a persistence, a failure, a sacrifice, disappointments, you know, the hard work, dedication, all the rest of the stuff below the surface. Now, this is a similar business model. I could do another one to do with depression and mental health, but you get this, the, the point I'm making that so much of it is above the surface. That's a bit you normally deal with, but all the real engine that drives you is below the surface. What happens in hypnotherapy is when you put somebody into a trance state, you flip it. So the big bit comes to the top and the little bit stays underneath the surface. So for instance, they might not know when I'm doing a stage show that uh, they're being hypnotized to do crazy stuff. Why don't they know? Because their awareness is underneath the water. But the crazy stuff is now let loose because the, their imagination, their senses, their protective factor, all these other elements are, are, are playing wild. And that's why sometimes people's ambitions change them when they get drunk at a party. So for instance, some people are really quiet, put a few drinks on them, oh my goodness, they change into a different person. Iceberg change. Do you get it now? So when somebody's in hypnosis, again, the same thing. So what happens is when we're looking at how to fix and change the state that somebody has, when they're in a real, we've got a real issue with, with mental health issues, it's below the surface, it's in that bit there. You can talk it until the cows come home, but what you really need to do is address what goes on below the surface. So that's what we're going to be looking at um, in some degree, because I'm not expecting to turn you into hypnotherapists or NLP master practitioners in one go today, but certainly to flag up a couple of things. And as we're talking about it, I do actually have a program to help people with this, but I'm not saying it to plug that. There are lots of different ways of learning online and so on about how your mind works too. So I've got the brand new U program, which I'll be talking about in future episodes. Um, but meanwhile, do what you can. Do a bit of research. Find out what you can do with meditation, um, hypnotherapy, NLP, and all these different things to change the state of your mind and allow you to feel differently. Next up, we're going to be having a look at something really important, and that's uh, diff seven different practices to help you feel better with yourself. That's coming up next on Speak on Stage. And I love your thoughts on comments, by the way. It's all about mental health. And today it's all about you. So welcome back. I want to share with you a couple of different ideas now. All about self-compassion practices. If you're in lockdown, especially if you're alone in lockdown, 
that will really help you to start thinking differently about yourself and hopefully feel better. Okay, I'm going to go through these quite rapidly because of the simple fact we've got a lot to get through today. Um, but hopefully, if you make notes of them or you return to the video as we go, then you'll find some things that will really help you. So uh, if you don't normally have a pen and paper, then just take a screenshot as you watch this and you can refer back to it uh, as you go. All right, number one, give yourself a gentle pass when it comes to overall productivity. That means some days you're not going to be doing well. Some days are tough. Some days the stuff that you're going to do is going to be less in comparison to what you do when you're in a really good mood. That's fine. Nobody said you have to be Superman or Superwoman. So some days just let yourself chill out, do what you need to do. And uh, if people don't like it, they can kiss your um. Right. Number two, uh, flip your mindset to the cold side of the pillow. Well, what does that mean? Well, sometimes you just don't want it to be hot all the time. Sometimes you just want to go, you know what, I'm going to relax. I'm going to have something a little bit different for myself. And I'm just going to take some time for me. There's nothing wrong with that. Do it long term, do it short term, do whatever it takes to make you feel better. Number three, honor your emotions. When you feel terrible, don't hide it. When you feel good, celebrate it. Celebrate when you feel terrible as well. Why? Because it's your subconscious mind trying to help you. It's letting your conscious mind know there's a problem. Let's return to the iceberg um, um, diagram. So let's have a look at it here. So all the emotions and feelings are below the surface. Remember I was talking about that earlier in the brown? Well, if you look at the conscious mind, the red stuff above the surface, this is your, um, your senses, your emotions, your imagination, your habits, your beliefs. All these things are letting the conscious mind know that there is a problem there. Don't fight it. Don't get rid of it. Just acknowledge it. Because once you acknowledge it, then you can deal with it. I feel terrible today. I feel really sad. Okay, let me feel sad. What's sad mean? It means I feel depressed. It means I feel empty. It means I've got no energy. It means I look at everything with a negative point of view. How long is it going to last? Well, it's going to last as long as it does last, but maybe I can change it once I've acknowledged it for a while. So you feel it for a while and you say, right, what can I do to cheer myself up? Maybe I'll have something to eat. Maybe get some ice cream or something like that. Maybe I'll have a drink. Maybe what I'll decide to do is I'll play some music that changes my emotional state. But you do it when you're ready to do it. Don't force yourself out of it. I do it all the time. Force myself out of whatever state when I go on stage. I'm not going on stages right now. So I enjoy having good and bad. Remember, in order to feel happy, you have to have this experience. You have to have the lows and the highs to be able to experience what... It, high is what happy is you can't have happy if everything's high because you won't know it's happy anymore you've got to feel that and that together to be able to understand what's happening does that make sense and also you don't want to block it because literally then your body will stop telling you and it's got to go somewhere and these become cancerous cells these become really difficulties for you they become uh, irritable bowel syndrome and lots of other complications because you're not letting it go here you're not letting it vent it so all that nastiness and there is nastiness um, chemicals get sent down to your bowels and they stay there and they're toxic and they're not very good so you can get rid of it just by breathing techniques in fact we'll probably be doing some stuff in the future with Art of Living uh, and I'll share with you just how amazing that organization is and how that can really help you too all right number four uh, when you're feeling helpless for help when you're feeling helpless help someone else when you it's like teaching you know one of the best ways to learn is to teach because then you're able to crystallize exactly what it is that you're learning because you find different things around it. So if you're feeling bad, you can help other people and learn as you go. And it does snap you out of it at the same time. And nice to know that Steve's calling me at the same time. That's good to see as well. Um, also, number five, find yourself moments for self-care whenever you can. Spend quality time for you whenever you can. You might be in lockdown, you might be out of it, but it's very important for you to find some time when you can be you. Number six, put your critical voice on mute. What does that mean? Well, that means don't be so hard on yourself. Sometimes you just got to chill out and say, I'm okay. You know what? I'll always be okay. And last to miss for a particular session, um, begin the mindfulness habit of collecting golden nuggets. Look around, have gratitude, get your gratitude book out. Do a vision board. What can you celebrate in your life? You've got food, you've got water, you've got breath, you've got friends, you've got Facebook, maybe not Facebook, but you've got lots of other things you can do. You've got TV, you've got, you've got um, contacts, you've got long lost friends, you've not been in contact. You've got loads of things you can do to make a big difference. Think about them and use them to a different effect. And with that, you've got a couple of small tips, little bits of battle.
tiny little things that help you move forward, make a change, and make it easier for you to find a way forward for the future. Right? Does that help? Good. So there we go, there's a couple of things there which I hope were of use to you um, about feeling how you get over the challenges of being in lockdown or even when you come out of it, the challenges of dealing with it. Don't be scared to deal with stress. I joke about having a stress ball, this stress gold, um, gold bar, but if you've got a squeeze toy that you can get all your frustration out on, then do whatever it takes. Really, do whatever it takes. As long as it's not hurting anybody else or hurting yourself, then it's literally taking one day at a time every single day. It's like running a marathon. You don't have to run a marathon. You just have to put one foot in front of the other and repeat until you get to the end of the, of the, of the race. And so we will come out of this. It will get better. And it's just really a case of how we best cope with it uh, and you're, how you're able to do so. So let's have a look at a couple of things. Uh, I'm going to share with you now what I suggest is the best way to move forward, uh, being able to survive the second pandemic. Uh, and if it hasn't come to you yet and you're not aware of it, then at least you've been forewarned. Uh, so you find it easier to deal with it when it comes. So why have I got the analogy of somebody in a swimming pool? Let me explain. It feels like we're all in a swimming pool together. Imagine you're thrown into a swimming pool. Some people swim effortlessly. Some people find a ring they can sit in that makes it nice and easy to deal with. Some people have to hold on to others. Some people go down and they don't make it, but you've got to pull them back up again and get them to the side and help them breathe. Some people just do our, uh, breaths and lengths of the pitch, the pitch of the pool uh, without any effort at all. Some people look for um, different ways of, of just treading water. You get the idea. Everyone's going to find their own way of doing it. That's why the analogy of a swimming pool, which I've used for many years uh, about life generally, fits in for me. And I think in this case, it makes a lot of sense as well. Okay, so let's look at this whole list of what you're going to do, in my opinion, as a, as a hypnotherapist and life coach for many years, to be able to deal with a second pandemic. So let's start off with the very first thing, in my opinion. Um, get through any way that you can. I mean, any way that you can doing whatever you have to with whoever you can. You might have family, you might have friends, you might have strangers, you might go onto the Samaritans depending on which country you're in, or, or people who deal with, in, with health and mental health. It's about getting yourself through the night and through the day and repeat. It's really about that. Honestly, I mean, I could, could, could put it um, lots of different ways, but that's the bottom line. Focus on the future. Where are you gonna be? What's gonna happen? What do you want? And then enjoy the journey of getting there every single day. Every day is an adventure. Imagine you're, you're actually in some kind of reality TV show. And so every day is like the Truman Show. You wake up, hello, good to see you. Where are you around the world? Nice to see you, blah, blah, blah. I mean, me doing this show is almost therapy for me. And that sounds really weird, but it is. It really helps me to focus, really helps me to get my head around what I need to be doing. Uh, and it also helps me get it out of my system. I find that being creative makes me feel better. And you probably have a hobby or something that you can use, which helps you. Exercise is brilliant for that, by the way, and routine. And then sometimes breaking the routine really helps you too. All right, so um, focusing on the future, learning to alter your state and choose your state. So hypnosis, meditation, yoga, NLP, anything that I mentioned earlier with this diagram allows you to turn the uh, iceberg upside down. And that's what altered states allow you to do. Listen to music works for that as well. You know, music in the background, music whenever you want. I mean, don't be scared to create a soundtrack of your life. Even if you just throw yourself into Spotify and start wading through all the tracks that you haven't heard for a while, but bring back better memories of times from, from the past that made you happy, that's all good as well. There's nothing wrong with anything that gets you moving forward as long as it works for you. And if other people don't like it, then that's fine as well because this is about getting you across the finishing line. You can't help others if you're not helping yourself. So look after yourself first and then you leave a trail of breadcrumbs that others can follow and you're able to help other people too. Does that make sense? I hope so. Okay, number four. 
is this, uh, redesign your life to regain control of who you are and what happens to you. So many times in our life from school, we're, we're waiting for exam results to come back and we, we want to keep the boss happy when we get a job and we've got a partner who we love, but sometimes we're in a bad mood, especially in lockdown, if they're going through the same kind of challenges. You've got kids who are making a lot of noise and they're all looking up to you to fix all this. You've got people who are living away, you've got parents, you've got whoever it is. Look after you first. Get control of you. Let me experience or share the experience that you need to think about. You know when you're flying on a plane in the old days when we used to have stewardesses, uh, when you were flying the old days, but you'd have a stewardess or, or a steward and they'd basically stand over the fire exits or they'd stand up the front and they'd, they'd put on the, the life jacket and they'd say, right, the exits are here, here and here. And uh, if an oxygen mask comes down, put it on yourself. And you'd always think, well, I've got my kid here, I could look after my kid. But no, you can look after yourself first. If you put an oxygen mask on your kid and then you pass out from smoke, your kid can't get you off the plane. Not physically strong enough. So that means that you both perish in the potential fire. If you're flying, by the way, I'm sorry, I don't mean it. It could be anything. It could be a bus or a train. Now, if you're going on a bus or a train, you're now worried. Get the analogy of the, of the oxygen mask. If you put it on you so you can breathe and you can see what's going on, you can pick up your kid and then disconnect it and get to safety. That's why you look after yourself first with these things. Do you get it? Same with this. So designing your life means you've got control of what happens in your life. I mean, I've been teaching life design. In fact, I, I'd never called myself a life coach. I was always a life designer because that's what I believe is the best way to make your life happen. Doing the stuff that you believe is the right thing for you and not anybody else because everybody else has got their own journey and it might not fit yours. So don't copy theirs unless it's good for you. Uh, number five, accept that there will be hurdles and there will be challenges and there will always be them because there have always been them. It's not always easy to get over these things, but every single day you have a challenge, whether it's getting out of bed or what you have for dinner, or maybe you've hurt yourself or you've gone through a relationship split or you've lost your job. You've always had these things in your life. This is just another one, big one, but it's just another one. You will deal with it. You will get through it. I promise you, just have faith in your ability. You don't get things in your life that you can't deal with. None of us do. We can all deal with this properly, I promise you. Number six, share your thoughts in a tribe or a support group or a network or extended family. If your family are negative people, you don't have to play with them, you know. You can just be nice from a distance, but then go off and spend time working on what you really need to do. Get a tribe or a network or experts on this to share stuff. If you spend time on forums on, online, then get a positive forum. Don't get one all about depression necessarily. They can help you, but reading all that stuff is like when you go to, when you've got a symptom of something. Supposing your arm's a bit sore. You've got, you've got a sore arm, it's been sore for about, two days now, and you Google it, and there's some tropical disease called sore arm, leg falling off, head goes wobbly syndrome. Go, oh my God, I've got, I've got sore arm, leg falls off, head got wobbly syndrome. What, 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 what are we gonna do? And you start getting really panicky. The truth is you haven't got that. It's just a, a, a psychosomatic um, thing that you thought, I must have this because I've been thinking about it. And so your body goes, okay, let's pretend we got that. And that's what part of mental illness challenge is. That's what it's really all about because you start thinking, maybe it's this and maybe it's that. Get rid of negative people from your radar. Literally, don't have to spend time with them. Get, wish them well, but they've got their own journey. And remember the swimming pool analogy. You have to float. Sometimes it's really hard to hold other people if you can't move your arms and legs yourself. You all go down and that's no good to anybody. Yeah? So therefore, once you are able to reframe how you deal with the stuff in your life, then you can help them reframe once you've worked out your stuff. I wouldn't do it before that because it's a blind leading the blind. No offense to blind people, that's what we're talking about. Okay, number eight, protect your independence. So your dependents, your interdependent people. You've got people who depend on you. You've got your staff maybe, you've got your family, you've got your friends, you've got your children, you've got your partner. They have to be protected. They might not be as strong as you, and if they're relying on you to be able to bring in the money to pay for everything, they're probably relying on you to be the person who leads a charge forward when it comes to being more effective and dealing with this better. So they are there for you. And basically, gamify. Think about it as a game. For your kids, break it down to a game. Right, by the end of the day, you've got to do this, this, and this. I'll give you special points or pocket money or something, or we'll go to Amazon if you, if you do it right, and I'll treat you. If you feel depressed, then you've got to tell me, you ring a bell, doesn't matter. Whatever you do, create a game around it, and then it becomes focus on the game, not focus on the problem. Do you get that? And if you're doing it on your own, laugh at things more.
Promise you, laughing makes it a lot easier. It, it doesn't stop the issue being there, but you don't focus on that. You focus on the laugh. I mean, endorphins you get that kick in make you feel so much better than ones that just make you feel like you feel down all the time. Number nine, throw out social norms. Forget what people say. Forget what it is. People say, oh, come on, cheer up. No, you cheer up. I'm going to do my own thing. I'm going to make it work my own way. And there's nothing wrong with that. What we deal with as a social norm works perfectly well. And if you call called Norm, I, I apologize for having a go at you. It's not you. You're a nice guy. Norm or Norman or Norma or Norma. If that's your real name, then I apologize for saying that name, I guess, and making fun of it. But the point is, what works in a normal world is not going to necessarily work now. It might work still, but do whatever it takes to make it easier for you because that's more important than anything else. All right, uh, number 10 is this one. Um, reach out and get help. There's plenty out there. People like myself, there's so many life coaches who have spent all their time saying, can I work with you? Can I help you? I'll teach you how to be happy. Oh, nobody wants to be happy. I'll be happy. I'll be happy. They're there. They're waiting. I would love to work with you. Sometimes it can be done financially. Sometimes it's done because they've got to put together the hours of coaching for free so we can turn around and justify the, the qualification. So reach out. There's lots of people there. Number 11, motivational speakers. Hello, people like me. Look online, find my stuff. Find Tony Robbins, find Jack Canfield, um, Dr. John Gray for relationships, Brian Tracy, um, Simon Sinek, Gary Vaynerchuk, Grant Cardone, Ty Lopez. I could go on forever. There's loads and loads. Les Brown, my dear friend Les Brown. So many people who are brilliant and their stuff is online on YouTube or you can buy their books. Let them be your music. Use music as well, but immerse yourself in motivation. The, we've been doing this for a living. Our job is to go into companies that are having challenges and make them feel better afterwards and make them feel productive. And most of our stuff is online as part of our marketing. Go find it. Seriously, make playlists every day. S schedule it. Motivational session as you have your cornflakes in the morning. Take a break after that motivational session until you don't feel that you need them. But maybe create a, a folder for the very best of it. YouTube is cataloged for that. And let other names that come up give you a, a, a chance to de deep dive into who they are and what they do. There's so many speakers out there, especially speakers who aren't working at the moment, who would really love to have a connection. Get on to them, reach out. Say, you know what? I listened to your video. I love, I, I watched your video. I love the things you were saying. I just want to say thank you very much. And before you know it, you've got a relationship that's booming with that person. And in most cases, motivational speakers are like that because that's what we do. We motivate people. That's why I do speak on stage. I do a motivational show every day to help. Okay, number 12, use gratitude to kickstart positive thinking. I've already talked about the power of gratitude. I have a gratitude book like this one here. There you go with gratitude on the front. Can you see it there, gratitude? It might be in reverse, okay? But it still says gratitude, whichever way you look at it. If you're a reverse person, you've got <laughs> gratitude. Okay, so do that because when you give thanks for the world, then you feel more positive about what you've got in it, and that changes your mood. You know what I mean? It recharges the way that you think about everything. and makes you feel much better. All right, number 13 is this one. Distract yourself and take a time out when you need to. Just distract yourself. You know, if you're feeling feeling down, put some telly on. Watch something that engrosses you. What I mean, don't watch weepy movies when you're feeling terrible, for goodness sake. Don't watch tragedies. Don't watch disasters. You know, I feel really bad. I feel depressed. I'm going to watch Titanic. No, no, no. Three hours. Of, oh, my goodness. Unless they make you feel happy. Do you know which people um, have been dealing with a pandemic better than anybody? This will surprise you. Who's able to deal with the challenges of the pandemic and the fears and the horrors and all the rest of it? I gave you a clue. I'll tell you who's been able to deal with it. Horror fans. People love watching horror movies. Why? Because they have an ability to get into this, get their head around it, maybe even prepare. If this happened to me, what would I do? And so when it actually happens in real life, as we're all being locked in, like an alien invasion or a zombie attack, oh, Walking Dead's on soon. <laughs> That cheers me up. I know, weird. Um, but th they're able to deal with it better than almost anybody else. Who could have imagined? They were right in the end. All right, and number... So number 13, distract yourself and take a time out when needed. And number 14 is this one. Get a pet or a pet project. 
What do you mean by a pet or a pet project? Well, I'll tell you what I mean by a pet or a pet project. Very simply, I've got two dogs and they don't know about the pandemic. What they do know is they are locked in a little bit. We go for a walk in the morning, sometimes a walk in an evening. But other than that, we're just there to give you love and care. Could be the same for a goldfish, even though you wouldn't take it for a walk because it just drag. I mean, they can never keep up. And then they just flop, 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 flop. Then no flop. Cats, again, cats come over and give you love. Any gerbil, maybe not so much love, more like little, little M&M poops all, all over the carpet. Doesn't matter. Pets really help. They really help. Um, and dogs and cats especially, that's why they're so popular. A snake even, mm, not if you're a mouse. But, but basically, pets help because they distract and they only know about love. But make sure it's a pet that gives you love. If it's a little cat and you go, oh, strong, Arr! then that's not giving you love. A dog, Arr! That's a me snarling, it's not really a dog. So choose a pet that really helps you. And there's lots of pets right now that you could have in your home that could really help you. And last, walk the marathon. What do I mean by that? Well, very simply, remember I mentioned it earlier, you don't have to run a marathon. You could walk a marathon, put one foot in front of the other and repeat. And that is the key to being able to deal with this. We are gonna come out the other side. We are gonna feel better. We are gonna be more centered and better human beings for the future because we've been through this, the worst challenge that almost anybody's had. But we have to get there. That's a key. Just be aware that we have to get there and take your time and do whatever it takes to finally get there. Right, I'm gonna leave this up for a few moments. If you want to just take a copy of it, a screenshot, um, I'll leave my face in unfortunately, but that's just the way it works. Uh, and then you can go through this. Feel free to share it to other people. And as always with Speak On Stage, feel free to share with other people this episode more than many because I really think that the pandemic is something that's not really being addressed and uh, most people don't know how to deal with it unless they are a mental and emotional health professional. This is Speak On Stage. Well, it's been an action-packed show, and I hope that you've enjoyed it so far. I'm going to spend the rest of the day coaching people with my industry icon program. That's what I do. I train people to be successful in their business by speaking and connecting and doing virtual TV or writing books or podcasting or whatever allows their branding to be prominent. If you've just started a business and you want to know how to do it better, contact me. If you want to reinvent yourself as somebody different, so you, you found online to drive your business, then contact me because I really do believe that every industry can have experts that are positioned really well. And most people don't know how to do it effectively. I do this show uh, just about every single day. Uh, this is episode 48, is it? No, 49. Ooh, tomorrow will be 50. Amazing. Um, and I do this to illustrate that I can talk very simply, and to reach people and help them. So if this interests you, you don't have to be a speaker. You can just use social media to grow your brand and grow the impact. But people will find you and will gravitate towards you if you're financially crazily minted and you don't care about the fact that you don't need the money, that's fine. You can just do it to elevate yourself and so you can share nuggets of wisdom with everybody. But if you want to drive your business and be more effective with your marketing, grow your personal brand and also react to the fact that you connect to people easier and they can find you more easily and they will also spread the word and position you really well, then doing the industry icon program is really useful for you. So what do you do? Well, very simply, all you need to do is go to speakonstage.com, which is my website, speakonstage.com. Dot com. Go there, have a look at the different modules that are available to train you to be a very good speaker. We've got a special deal on at the moment. And then just go to the industry icon section, click on it and book a Calendly uh, meeting with me for 10, 15 minutes. I've got room for a few more people, but not many. I've got to be honest, I've got some huge projects, international projects I'm working on. So if you really want to do it and you've been watching the show, you're thinking, I'd like to see what Dave can say, what he can do to help, then book a short meeting and let's see if I can, I can help you. I'm not helping people get jobs. That's a different thing, and I'm not an expert on that. My way of dealing with a challenge of looking for a job uh, and going to job interviews is never going for another job interview. I don't do job interviews. I don't want to work for anybody else. I don't want a job. I do what I do. I get paid very handsomely. I work with amazing people all around the world, and I would urge you, if you're at a crossroads in your life, at least to start a side job, a side hustle, so you can experience what I go through. But more than anything, if you start your own business, yeah, it's tough, there's no guarantee, there's no safety net, there's no guarantee the money's gonna come in or people are gonna gravitate towards you. But with the techniques I share every single day, uh, and also the things that I know from experience of being 
in this particular space and entrepreneurs will say yes as i'm saying this they get it as well i've been in this space now for what most of my life i would say since graduating or going to university at least 35 40 years i haven't worked for anybody else apart from on and off uh last 30 years for definite i stopped working for anybody else uh and it means that you're in control of everything and you have a discomfort zone that means you don't get thrown out of your comfort zone because you're never comfortable and guess what that makes you feel comfortable I know I have to go out and hunt every day. I know I have to make new relationships with clients. I know it can be tough. And I know that I have to manage my moods and my sensibilities. I have to be careful of my P's, my Q's, and how I relate to people. But I've always been like that. So this isn't a big challenge for me. And I realize it may be for you. So maybe it's time for you to think about something completely different and reinvent yourself uh, as an entrepreneur, at least in part of what you do. And that way you got that safety net. If case something happens to your job, then you are already halfway out the door or creating a new lifeboat for you. So you could use that to escape to safety and freedom and success because things will get better. So I hope that's been of use to you. I mean, uh, the Industry Icon program is not by, by accident. It's really there to get you to be more successful at doing what you do. And that's what I do. I love your thoughts and comments. Keep them coming, by the way. This is Speak On Stage. So that brings us to a close today. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. The, the sensibilities were all about this, how to survive the second pandemic. And I was very sensible. And tomorrow I'll probably be a bit more bonkers because we'll do another subject unrelated, but all related because we're here in lockdown. You have no choice but to watch and I have no choice but to share cool stuff with you. Love your thoughts, love your comments. I really do appreciate you being here. And while you're here, I will continue to make the shows and share them with you. You just let people around the world know what's going on. I look forward to seeing you same time tomorrow. I'm going to leave you with a video that I recorded in the Maldives. I can't even think of when I'm next going to get to the Maldives, but this is a real time. It started raining. I got up from a dinner table, grabbed my phone, this very phone, and made a video of what I thought about the rain in the Maldives and what happens to people really in life. Love to know your thoughts, but meanwhile, just enjoy. I'll catch you tomorrow with another show. This is Speak on Stage. Look after yourself and uh, stay groovy. Bye-bye. Sometimes it rains in paradise. You leave everybody behind and you look around and the rains come down. It got to that point where you thought, I can start on my own. I can do my own thing. But then when the rain comes down, you can't tell what's behind you and you can't tell what's in front. In real terms, that means you're not really sure where you've been or where you're going to go. So what do you do? Do you look for shelter? Do you look for a place to hide? A place where you can not be seen and you can lick your wounds? Or do you just test the water? Feel what it's like, feel the consistency, and make a decision. Maybe I can still do this. It doesn't matter where you are, how big you get, how powerful you are, how connected, how successful. It's always going to rain in paradise. But the big difference is what are you going to do about it? The smart people make choices as they go. The smart people learn to deal with it as it comes. The smart people know that regardless of what happens right now, the sunshine will come out. Life will be good and you'll get your opportunity to shine. That's why the successful people always make it to the top. When everybody else runs for cover, they get out their umbrella, they take stock of how tough the weather's going to be and they keep moving on. Life is too short. You have the ability to stay outside in the rain. If you didn't, your skin wouldn't be waterproof. Bear that in mind, because you can enjoy an amazing experience of living life in the rain in paradise.